coming up. 30 years, no relief. I can't take this pain, but I had to endure it. A car accident left her with chronic pain. I couldn't get that pain to go nowhere. Now see her instant cure. Wait a minute, is this real? Plus, the football star and champion for the faith, Tim Tebow joins us live and introduces us to some of his newest friends on today's 700 Club. Welcome, folks. We're delighted to have you as members of our 700 Club audience, and thank you for being with us. You know, a great caravan is heading toward America. Why? Because the immigrants feel that they can now get into this country, and so they're at the border ready to go. And what are we looking at? Sweeping immigration reform. President Biden is proposing a path to citizenship for millions of undocumented immigrants and dreamers. Could this cause a mass migration, flooding our borders and putting our nation in even greater peril from the pandemic? Well, that's not all the president is proposing for immigration reform. Eric Phillips has that full story. The president's priority highlighted during his campaign is reuniting immigrant families separated under the Trump administration's zero tolerance policy. That executive order creates a task force that would identify separated children in the U.S. and find their parents spread across Latin America where they were likely deported. There are some 600 parentless children here, according to the ACLU. Jim Daly, with Focus on the Family, calls it a step in the right direction. I think it's good for the U.S. government to try to keep those families together. I was a foster care child. I know what it means to be separated from your family. And that's a scary time for a child. A second executive order directs Homeland Security to review the Trump remain in Mexico policy. It restricts those seeking asylum from crossing the border while they wait for their cases to be decided. Monday, the White House asked the Supreme Court to cancel upcoming arguments on the legality of the program, arguing it leaves asylum seekers in potential danger. Sister Norma Pimentel is with Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley. Yes, it's important to keep our country safe, to know who enters our country, but we also must not lose our humanity in the process of doing that. The Biden administration is proposing sweeping immigration reform that will provide a path to citizenship for millions of undocumented immigrants and dreamers, those brought to the U.S. illegally as children. The administration is moving carefully, however, so it doesn't encourage any mass migration in these COVID times flooding borders where some families have been waiting a year or more to enter the country. But as CBN News correspondent Chuck Holton reports from Mexico, many are already on the way. This migrant center in Juarez has several hundred migrants from Guatemala, Honduras, Brazil, and Cuba. And they're seeing a big increase over the last several weeks since the inauguration as more migrants flood into this city, all hoping to get across into the United States. We came to the border because we thought they had canceled the MPP. We are all here waiting for Joe Biden to help us, all of us, Cubans, Hondurans, Guatemalans. We've been waiting for this day. What he is doing is creating a new crisis at the border and one that will have a direct impact on both the national health crisis, because you cannot test everybody who comes across, and the national unemployment crisis, because all these people are going to need to work. And I hope we as an American nation can actually uh, secure the borders and do the things to put people in line who want to get here. Reversing policies won't come easy for the Biden administration. Many were enacted through regulations under the previous administration, and it will likely take months to change them. Eric Phillips, CBN News. You know, folks, I, I always felt those DACA's deserved uh, citizenship. They've been here most of their lives, and they're, they're wonderful Americans. There's no reason we couldn't uh, give them citizenship. But to bring in people illegally, people who've come and broken our laws, and their reward for breaking our laws is to be made citizens of this country, to get health care and all the other privileges that we get as Americans, is just insane. No country, no country can exist if it doesn't have any kind of control over immigration. No country can, can, you just can't open your border to everybody. 
because in, in Latin America, what are they, 300 million people there? And they'd love to come live in America. And you say, well, you know, they, they're, they're in danger of their lives and so forth. Well, that's one reason to let them in. But just the fact that they, they think it's going to be a better life here than it is in Honduras or El Salvador, that is not a reason to grant citizenship. And you've got people who've legally come in and they deserve a place, but they've waited and they've done, they've obeyed our laws. These other people have broken our laws, and yet we're going to reward them under the current uh, Biden plan. Uh, by being illegal, we will give them the privileges of citizenship. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the question we ask ourselves is in impeachment, can you impeach somebody uh, who is no longer in office? Would that bill be, be amount to what's called a bill of a tainter? Would that is that what it would be? Uh, is it legal? Can you can you um, impeach somebody who isn't in office anymore? Well, the first clash is in the upcoming impeachment battle. What is it? And what happens next? John Jessup has that. Thanks, Pat. Former President Trump's defense team denies that the Senate has the right to hold an impeachment trial. In its challenge to the House impeachment manager's case, his attorneys claim the Constitution requires a person to be a current office holder to be impeached and removed. And since Mr. Trump is no longer in office, impeachment, they say, does not apply. They're also refuting charges that the president's statements to the crowd at the January 6th rally led to the Capitol invasion. They say the president's words were about the need to fight for election security in general, not to interfere with counting the electoral votes. And Pat, the Senate trial, as you know, begins next week. Well, you know, what is the purpose? We're going to hold up America. We've got to get relief to people who are suffering. We've got this COVID crisis. So what are we going to do? We're going to spend time in a fruitless endeavor. Because just like the last one, there is no way the Senate is going to vote two-thirds to impeach President Trump, ex-President Trump, or any other Trump. Uh, it's not going to happen. It wasn't going to happen the last time. It won't happen now. But what is the House trying to do? Well, they just don't like Trump, and they want to hate him, and they want to show this is how come we hate him. But that's not reason enough to, bring, uh, to stall the Senate. And they say, well, you can, you can uh, uh, walk and chew gum at the same time. And they, so we, we, uh, we, we can get appointments through while we're still conducting a trial. It isn't going to work that way. But, you know, who ever heard of a, of, a, of a trial where the defense attorney didn't have a chance to uh, question witnesses, didn't have a chance to bring evidence, where there was no evidence one way or the other, and the defendant had no chance to defend himself? Who ever heard of such a thing? That's not due process, but that's what the House did. They gave the president no opportunity to defend anything. They just rushed through an impeachment, and now they've got it, and it's been delivered to the Senate. And the Senate should say, this is unconstitutional. We're not going to take it. But, oh, no, they'll have to hold a trial, and it'll take forever. The chief judge won't be doing it because he can only sit in a trial of a president. So the... Uh, Speaker Pro Tem of the uh, Senate is going to preside, and he's, I understand, having some illness. So who knows what's going to happen, but we, we just have got to stop this politics of personal destruction. We can't have it. And if they can impeach President Trump after he's out of office, think of what the Republicans can do to the next Democrat or they can do to somebody else. It, is, it, it, it violates the Constitution, and we need to abide by what the Constitution has to say. Well, as a tragedy about serving a warrant, and two brave FBI agents have been dead because of what happened. John has more. That is right, Pat. The FBI is investigating the shooting that left two agents dead and three wounded in Sunrise, Florida Tuesday. Special agents Daniel Alfin and Laura Schwarzenberger were fatally shot when a suspect opened fire as they served a search warrant. The case dealing with violent crimes against children. Multiple law enforcement agencies responded swarming to the South Florida neighborhood when the suspect barricaded himself in his apartment. 
He later died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Well, murder rates saw a historic increase nationwide last year, according to a report from the National Commission of COVID-19 and Criminal Justice. As CBN Charlene Aaron reports, experts analyzed data from American cities, big and small, to investigate the pandemic's impact. The study looked at crime rates in 34 cities ranging in size from New York to Norfolk, Virginia. In addition to the significant spike in homicides, researchers found how the pandemic may have contributed to the uptick in violence. While 2020 will be remembered for deaths due to COVID-19, this report also found an increase of 1,268 homicides over the year before. Statistics in urban areas tell an even bigger story. In Milwaukee, the total increased by 85 percent. Seattle saw a 63 percent rise. New York City, 43 percent. And in Chicago, a city known for shootings, there were 278 more murders in 2020, an increase of 55 percent. While other crimes, such as stolen cars and assaults, rose as well, the report takes a close look at the connection between the homicide increase and the pandemic. It points to stress caused by isolation and extreme social restrictions, combined with economic loss and fear of death as possible factors. We see even the healthiest of individuals with unlimited resources to coping strategies who are struggling. Dr. Danny Holland of Regent University's School of Psychology leads the Institute for Violence Research. He says those stressors could lead people to violence and even murder. It definitely could. It could push somebody over the edge. I think somebody who has a propensity for aggression or somebody who has a tendency to be aggressive in other different ways may go that direction. Still, COVID isn't the only reason behind the increase. Extreme violence racked many cities following the police-related deaths of George Floyd and other African Americans. Criminologists also cite increased gang violence and a surge in gun ownership. Filmmaker Dimas Salaverios recently looked at the impact of surging violence in his film, Chicago, America's Hidden War, which is under Oscar consideration. He describes its devastation on communities, particularly children. We were walking through the streets. We asked for the addresses of the most dangerous blocks in Chicago. And we remember we met this little kid, you know, his name was Quincy, who was sleeping under his bed. He said his house had bullet holes in it. He's seen bullets fly everywhere. We talked to another kid who was around nine years old. He said, I watched in front of my face my cousin get beat up and shot twice and killed. Then the killer came back and shot him again. He said, I can never forget these things. Salaberrios says the church can make a difference. Mm. This film shows guns being turned into pastors, people being baptized and quitting gangs. Wow. The church is the answer and we can bring the homicides down, but we got to stay out there. Meanwhile, experts say given these findings, it's crucial we get the pandemic under control. Then law enforcement, the church and community leaders can work on ways to bring people together to stem violence across America. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. Well, some promising news on the coronavirus front. Researchers at Oxford University say the AstraZeneca vaccine is not only 76% effective after one dose, but people who get the shot are also less likely to spread the disease to others. Health experts say reducing transmission is vital as more contag contagious strains are cropping up around the globe, some of which appear to be resistant to vaccines. Here in the United States, access to vaccines is about to expand. One million doses are slated for more than 6,000 pharmacies across the country next week, making it easier for those eligible to receive the shot. And Pat, that's especially true in rural and low-income communities. It's certainly a welcome thing. You know, my oldest son came by the house the other day, and he, I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm going to have to go across uh, the river to Newport News because I have an appointment to get a, a vaccination, a shot over there. And the, the, they weren't doing it in Virginia Beach or Norfolk. He had to go to uh, an adjoining city across the James River. I don't know where they're showing it. Have you, have you gotten it, by the way? I haven't. Both my parents have had it, both their shots, because, but they're in West Virginia, which is leading the nation in the it, vaccine rollout. Amazing. What is Jim Justice? He just, he just got it and got them all out there. He's something I'm going to actually talk to him today, and we'll have a story uh, on oh, soon. Good. And uh, find out exactly what they did, because they are leading the nation 
and people of most people, not most, but a lot of people have already had their second shot there. It's amazing. Well, hopefully this new AstraZeneca uh, thing you can do with one shot, but uh, you've had to take two Johnson and Johnson was going to bring out uh, one with uh, one shot, or but they haven't gotten it out. But th this one, if it's that effective, uh, who knows? But anyhow. Uh, uh, it's, somebody's going to be able to get it so, so far. All right. Hopefully soon. All right. Well, up next, this couple was living the high life until they hit rock bottom. How did they go from living out of a cooler to running a multi-million dollar company? See for yourself. And then later, the football legend, philanthropist, and now a children's book author. Tim Tebow invites us to his party to remember. Coming up. Imagine, so poor that they didn't even own a refrigerator. The Hedersons were living out of a cooler. A cooler. It was a steep fall for a couple who had been once living the high life. So what the, took them from riches to rags? And then how did they come roaring back with a multi-million dollar business? This is kind of an interesting story. Take a look. Glenn Henderson of Jacksonville, Florida serves as a consultant for corporations like Hobby Lobby and the American Bible Society. He and his wife, Regina, are successful entrepreneurs who seem to have it all. My husband and I are type A individuals. We're very driven. We're nonstop. When they first married, the Hendersons started a transport business and initially did very well. We had been living very, very high and enjoying things that were shiny and glitzy but not really focusing on the God that we had both been raised to love and know. Uh, we were more takers than givers. We got in trouble with the Internal Revenue Service uh, and we incurred a lot of debt. It was one blow after another, one loss after another, and then that was the time that uh, we just hit rock bottom. They had to declare bankruptcy. For the next two years, the Hendersons struggled to start over but all their efforts seemed fruitless. We were so poor that we didn't even have a refrigerator. We were living out of a cooler. There was no income, and I had used to put change into a jar, whatever loose money I had in my pocket. And so we actually lived on that for quite some time. Then, Regina started watching the 700 Club and shared what she was learning with Glenn. The 700 Club was very instrumental in encouraging us uh, during that time period. We heard about this law of reciprocity for this guy by the name of Pent Robertson. It was at that time that we began to realize that God has everything to say about his money and money that he affords us to manage. And that became very important to us in honoring um, our Lord and honoring God in the things that we do. We understood from our time of learning that we should pray about it. We should ask God to help us. We should give of ourselves. We didn't have any money to give. So we would go to the food banks and we would help there. I delivered meals on wheels. I remember taking care of our elderly people and, and just say, well, Lord, I don't have money to give, but I will give of my time. I will give of whatever talents I have. Soon after, Glenn and Regina got work as contractors and launched AFC Worldwide, a transport company from their apartment. They started tithing from their income and gradually worked their way out of debt. We came to learn that you grow as the business grows. So when the business actually outgrew the apartment is when we sublet it another location. And then once we grew too big for that, then we got our own place. In 2008, the company they contracted for folded. So the Hendersons took over many of their contracts. The very next year, they brought in $200,000 in revenue. As they grew, they continued to give. Soon, they were serving high-profile clients, including Motorola, Hallmark, and the White House. As we were focused and committed to biblical principles and not borrowing and just doing things little by little, as Deuteronomy as this passage says, the Lord gave us increase and he provided for us. We had favor and we began to see our lives change. By the time they sold their company three years later, sales were trending to hit $100 million. 
it just changed our whole world that the, the business does not belong to us, it belongs to God. Glenn now oversees and serves as a pastor of a 100,000 square foot ministry and commercial space. He and Regina continue tithing from their investments and enjoy teaching others the principles of giving. We're givers now. Uh, we enjoy the fact that we can not only tithe, but that we can do above. It's really not about the money, it's about your heart. And it's about how you manage God's resources. He will provide for us if we manage things His way. Money is a, is a cruel master, but a great servant. And if we use it to bring glory to God, He will bless you. Isn't that great? Money is, is, is a good servant, and it should be a servant. You know, the Bible talks about the uh, question of, of how you take care of what's here. And uh, Jesus gave a parable about somebody, and the result was make friends with the righteous mammon. Right? Make friends with your money, so when it fails, they will receive you into eternal habitation. Make friends with your money. And so why not? You know, it, it isn't hard to give. It's fun to give. It's always an opportunity. When somebody offers me an opportunity to give, I, I think, man, this is a chance. So well, look what God's going to do. I'm going to see 30, 60, and 100 fold mm -hmm. blessing back. Why not? God says it. You know, it's in the Word. It's in the Bible. He says, prove me with your tithes and offerings if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing you can't contain it. I like that. I want so much I can't contain it. Well, why not? <laughs> That's what happened with Glenn and Regina. It was so much they couldn't contain it. It was huge what God did. Now, look, what we'd like you to do is, is join the 700 Club. You know, well, why don't you start like they did? I mean, $20 a month and see what happens. And then maybe you want to go more. That's fine, too. But when you do, I want to give you something that I hope will be a blessing. It's called I Have Walked with the Living God. And this is a book that has, it's got a whole bunch of pictures in here, that, starting about the days of CBN, about how you can overcome uh, trials, how you can get victory over demonic spirits. I mean, it's an incredible book with all kinds of wonderful things in it. And we'll give this to you free uh, if you just call in right now and say, I want to be a 700 Club member. $20 a month, 65 cents. But you know, God says, prove me, and look what happens. So the uh, telephone number is 1-800-700-7000. So many great stories, Pat, that you tell that build your faith, and you don't hold back. Oh, yeah. You tell, you tell it like it happened. Yeah. I love it. It's, <laughs> it's brutally honest. I, I, I admit a whole lot of mistakes, and I, I give God the glory for all the blessing. But anyhow, $10, I mean, $20 a month, and, and this is yours. Or you can get, we had Kevin Corbo, uh, Corbo do a, um, uh, a, a electronic version of it, and you can get that one if you're interested. And uh, $20 a month, and uh, you can be... Well, you can receive a blessing. I hope this book is a blessing to you. I'd like some, Wendy. It was to me. All right. Yeah. Well, like a double punch to the gut. That's how Craig described the pain of coping with the COVID pandemic and then being hit by a cat for a hurricane. Can you imagine? All the residents of Lake Charles, Louisiana, were reeling in the aftermath of that storm. They were desperate for food and water until Operation Blessing came to the rescue. The COVID-19 outbreak hit America hard. When Category 4 Hurricane Laura ripped through Louisiana, things went from bad to worse. It's like a double punch. It's the old one, two. You get the COVID, then you get the hurricane. And it was our year, I guess. It literally, the place looked like a bomb went off. Lady Charles people have lost just about everything, business too. So my heart go out to them and myself and my family. Been no water. Uh, there's been no electricity now for days. With no electricity for several weeks, everyone's perishable food went bad fast. We had to stand on long lines to get food for COVID and everything, and then this hit, and it's terrible. Pastor Jerry Snyder and his wife Hope partnered with Operation Blessing to host a food and supplies distribution at their church. We're giving out fresh produce. We're giving out products that they need to clean. We're giving out 
food, trash bags, dog food, all the things that they need. One of our core values is that unity builds community. And that's what we're here as a church to do. But when you have churches like this, that step up their game to another level and help all these people, and that's a blessing of God for this church to be doing this. Thanks to the prayers and support of Operation Blessing donors, families in Lake Charles were able to get the food and supplies they needed to take their first steps toward recovery. We are so blessed to be here as a church doing what Jesus would want us to do. As y'all are a godsend, y'all are doing God's work. It means a lot, it really does. Thank you, Operation Blessing. Thank you, every partner that sows, that gives, that cares. You absolutely are the heart of Jesus. I believe that, and we feel it right here in Southwest Louisiana, Christian World. We want you to know, thank you. We love you. Well, when you join the 700 Club, you'll also receive instant access to the audio version that Pat mentioned, I Have Walked with a Living God, read by actor Kevin Sorbo. You can listen at home or on the go on your computer phone, smart TV, or favorite device by using the CBN Family app. Activate your streaming link when you join as a CBN partner today. Well, up next, what do you get when you cross a bird, a bunny, and a bronco? You get a party to remember. Tim Tebow takes us inside the pages of his newest children's book. And then, pain-free after 30 agonizing years, one woman touches her lower back and feels warm air coursing through her body. How did this miracle happen? She'll tell you herself later on today's show. Tim Tebow is a two-time college football national champ, and every year he makes special needs children feel like they're the real Heisman winners. His Night to Shine events had 100,000 attendees last year. Now Tebow is throwing a different kind of party, and this one involves a Bronco. Well known as a former NFL quarterback, sports commentator, and member of the New York Mets, Tim Tebow is just as well known for his strong Christian faith and values. Through his vast philanthropic work around the world, he communicates this belief. That we were created in love, by love, for love, that we are unique, that we are special, and that makes you wonderful. It's that message that Tim is sending to kids everywhere in his first children's book, Bronco and Friends, a party to remember, telling them that every person has great worth and having challenges doesn't change that. Tim Tebow joins us now via Skype. Tim, welcome to the 700 Club. Welcome back, I should say. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, we just mentioned your Night to Shine event coming up next week. What can you tell us about this year's event? Well, Night to Shine is truly my favorite night of the year. It's actually um, what actually brought me and my wife together. So it's special for us in so many ways. And and you know what? In, in a year where so much has been canceled, we couldn't cancel Night to Shine because um, we know that hundreds of thousands of people um, love it, look forward to it, and um, and I look forward to it. And we just couldn't cancel it, but we also couldn't put anybody at risk with COVID-19. So we worked so hard and we adapted it to where we're actually having shine throughs, which is like a night to shine drive through parade um, because the red carpet is so important in our society. And, and kids will walk down red carpets and have fake paparazzis and it's so exciting for them. And, and red carpet signifies VIP, very important worth, value. And a lot of times in our society, those people are actresses and, um, and singers and athletes, but on Night to Shine, it's every single one of our kings and queens. So instead of walking down a red carpet this year, they'll be driving over red carpets on Shine Through in the parade and, and being celebrated the entire time. But then they all get to go home and have Night to Shine virtual. Um, and we're so excited that because we have so many special guests and dancing and then ultimately the crowning at the end for every single one of our kings and queens because we want them to know just how valuable they are just how much worth they have, that they truly are a king and a queen, not just in our eyes, but in God's eyes every day. Amen. Well, Tim, in addition to working with special needs children, your foundation works to end human trafficking. What are some of the ways you're doing that? 
Well, we do it in three main ways. Number one is to, um, we believe in strong families. And if we have, can support families in their time of need, um, then a lot of times they might not make the choice to sell their daughter, to sell their son, because as horrible as it is, there's a huge percentage of trafficking that actually comes from familiar trafficking, where families sell members of their own family. So number one, it's to support strong families. Number two, it's to rest, you know, um, wherever they wherever they're at, um, here in the States or abroad in different countries, if they're trafficked, we want to rescue them. We have partnered with so many organizations to um, to rescue the girls in their time of need. And number three is long-term restoration, is with our safe homes, with our teams, of, um, you know, with our um, our people that, that absolutely have given their lives to loving and supporting girls and being with them every step of the way, no matter what, because we're not just going to um, rescue them and say, okay, you're on your own. No, we're going to rescue them and we're going to be with them every step of the way. It's actually really exciting. A couple weeks ago, we had a celebration for, for some of our girls and we call it a celebration, not a graduation because the graduation kind of means you're moving on. Celebrating, celebrating another milestone. And so we had a celebration and um, it was so exciting because um, one of the girls is starting seminary. Another one just got an awesome job. Another one's finishing school. And so um, we just want to be there for long-term restoration as long as it takes, however it takes. Um, and, and we just believe that, that our God is one of, of hope and healing. And, and, you know, like our mission statement says, to bring faith, hope, and love to those needing a brighter day in their darkest hour of need. Wow, that is so incredible. Well, Tim, you've written a new children's book. We're going to talk about that in a second. But let's talk about your own childhood first. You spent your first few years in the Philippines as the son of missionaries. What impact did that have on you? I think it had a huge impact. I think it had a huge impact because um, I got to see um, my parents love and serve so many people. I got to be part of a culture that I love so much in the Philippines. But it wasn't just that time. There was also, um, I, I can't even tell you, I really don't even know how many times I've been back. It's more than I can really count. Um, and so being able to, to you know, be go back to the Philippines so many times, but also have the chance to get to um, dozens of countries around the world and see different cultures. And, um, and that, what that does is multiple things. One, it makes you realize how blessed you are and, 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 and what we have here in America that so many times we take for granted. Two, it makes you see real hurt and real poverty around the world. And yes, we have um, you know, some of that here in the States, but you also see it on mass levels um, overseas. You literally see throwaway kids. You see, you know, that's where my life got changed was when I was in the jungles of the Philippines and I met a boy who was literally viewed as the cursed boy, the throwaway kid. And, um, and I just knew God pricked my heart that day because no one's a throwaway kid to God. No one's a cursed boy to God. And, um, and that changed my life to uh, what really inspired me to want to start the Tim Tua Foundation um, because I fell in love with that boy. I wanted to fight for every single boy or girl um, that was known as a throwaway or cursed or less than kid because I don't believe that God created anyone that is cursed or less than or insignificant. Well, Tim, what can you tell us about Bronco, his friends, and this, the party to remember? <laughs> well, I can tell you that this book is so near and dear to my heart because um, I remember when I was a, a boy and my parents would read to me, and I remember the impact that it had because I would go to sleep and I would think about whatever it is they would read to me. And sometimes it would be a really, you know, happy um, joy-filled book. And sometimes it would be more truth-filled. And I thought, man, you know what? It'd be awesome if I could merge the two, if I could bring, have a book really come to life with a lot of fun and joy, but then also share really nuggets of truth um, um, that kids can hold on to. And so really what I wanted to do is I wanted to share about every single person's work and their value and their meaning. And so we did that by um, telling the story of these animals working together to try to go to this um, extravagant party and this party um, to go to it, you have to have a special puzzle piece and it's got to be your puzzle piece and everybody has one, but you have to find it. And it's amazing. These animals on this journey, they find their puzzle piece actually by helping one another. And isn't that true in life that we find our purpose by helping one another so many times, but then all of them have a puzzle piece. And at the end, they get to put their piece in the grand puzzle. And I believe every single one of us in the grand scheme of life, we have a piece to play in God's big puzzle. And we have purpose in that. We have meaning in that. And sometimes we don't always like our puzzle piece, and sometimes we love it. 
But we have a puzzle piece. It is part of God's big design. And we got to remember that a lot of times in finding our purpose, it's in helping other people find theirs along the way. Because it's not about that one day when we get to the party. It's about every day and helping the people we come in contact with every day. Because you might be the puzzle piece that's missing, right? That's the whole point of that's the book. That's exactly right. And can that's I just, exactly right. I love the footnote at the very end. You are unique. You are special and you are wonderful. What a great message to little ones. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for writing it. I really enjoyed it. The book is called Bronco and Friends, A Party to Remember. It's available in stores nationwide. Tim Tebow, God bless you and your new wife. We know you're still newlyweds. Uh, she's so beautiful. We're so happy for you. God bless you and all that you're doing. God bless you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate, appreciate what you do. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely, our pleasure. Thanks, Pat. A great athlete and a terrific guy. Well, up next, quote, like bricks hitting my lower back. That's how this woman describes the pain she lived with for 30 years. So how was she instantly healed while sitting on her own couch? You're about to find out next. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News break. U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who died from injuries sustained in the January 6th Capitol invasion, is being remembered today. Sicknick lying in honor in the Capitol Rotunda overnight Tuesday as lawmakers and fellow officers honored his sacrifice. The President and First Lady Joe Biden also paid their respects. After a ceremony this morning, Sicknick, who served in the National Guard, will be interred at Arlington National Cemetery. Investigators are still working to identify a suspect in the case. Well, a Texas pregnancy center is celebrating 30 years of providing women with guidance, education, and medical help. The Prestonwood Pregnancy Center also has been sharing the hope of the gospel in the Dallas-Fort Worth area since 1991. It's served 100,000 patients and seen 90,000 women choose to have their babies. More than 400 people became, uh, chose to become Christians in the last year alone. One of its centers is directly across the street from a Planned Parenthood clinic. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Like heavy bricks on her lower back. That's the kind of excruciating pain that Edna Calhoun endured for an amazing 30 years. Edna saw doctors, she took medication, and her pain got only worse. So when did Edna, so what did she do when she couldn't take the agony any longer? Well, here's the answer. Newly retired customer service rep Edna Calhoun is making the most of her free time. I love to get out and go places. I usually get, you know, get together with some of um, the girls. You know, I played like spades. We have spade night, Friday, Saturday night, do that. And loving my grandchildren. You know, I got two, I got two grandchildren. For years though, Edna couldn't even enjoy the simple things in life. In 1987, she began experiencing sharp back pain following a string of car accidents. Oh, dealing with these chronic pains, you know, especially if I sit down for a long period of time, you know, it's just that pain in my lower back. Edna saw a chiropractor and physical therapist. They suggested exercises to help. Her doctor prescribed pain relievers and muscle relaxers. However, as the years went by, the pain only got worse. Oh my God, the pain felt like bricks, heavy on my lower back. It wasn't my side or anything. It was just that lower back uh, right above the tailbone. And, and, and I couldn't get that um, excruciating uh, pain to go nowhere. I put the uh, hot pads on it. I put the cold pads on it. And then, you know, I had to lay in the bed a certain way. Then when I had to lay on my side, I had to put like a pillow that had an arch, you know, for me to sleep. Whether it was at work where she had to sit for long hours or at home, Edna was in constant pain for 30 years. Often, she prayed. It, it was just like, Lord, come on, I can't take this pain, but I had to endure it. Over the years, 
Edna often turned to the 700 Club for encouragement. She was watching on September 1st, 2020, when the hosts began praying. Well, Someone, you, you have lower back pain that has just plagued you for years, and God is healing you right now. This Today is your day, just receive it. You are healed, and that pain will not be there anymore in Jesus' name. And I sat up, I said, that's me. They talking about me, and I, and I point my hands toward the TV, touch the lower of my back, and I felt like a warmth of, I mean, I mean fresh air, I don't know where that came from, but it was felt like a warmth went down my lower back. And like, at my lower back, I felt like something went across my lower back, like it went away. And then I said, wait a minute, is this real? I wasn't for sure. You know, you know, I said, oh, this is just a little fluke. It, it probably gonna be hurting, you know, the next day. And the next day I woke up, oh, it's not here. And then I was so happy, and I, and I was just telling everybody. Today, she is active as she can be, enjoying retirement and her granddaughters, thankful to God for healing. Uh, that God is real. He, you know, he, uh, he hears your cry. He hears your prayer. Just trust Him. Just believe Him. Hitherto you've asked nothing in my name, Jesus said. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy might be full. Here's somebody whose name is Faris. He sent an email. He said, I was watching the 700 Club, and Terry spoke a word of knowledge. To somebody watching, you feel like pins on the sole of your feet. Now God has decided to remove that discomfort permanently. I claimed it. Immediately God healed me, and I thank you and pray that God will keep you and, and Terry as he anoints you in his great power. What do you have? Oh, here's one. Rose Marie of Castro Valley, California, went through the ordeal of having her hip replaced in 2018, but the pain persisted. She learned to live with the chronic pain. But while watching the 700 Club, she heard you say, Pat, someone, your hip isn't quite sitting the way it's supposed to be. Your hip will be healed almost from this moment. You are healed. By faith, Rosemary believed it, and the pain left immediately. All right, folks, you know, God loves you. And with God, it's so easy. I mean, God made you, and he's good. All the power is given unto him in, in heaven and earth. Now, Terry, I mean, uh, Wendy and I are going to join hands together, and we're going to believe God for you. And what I want you to do at this moment is say, okay, I receive it. And if you will do that, the God of the universe will act on your behalf. So we're going to believe yes, God for you, Father. You. All over this audience, there are people suffering. There are people who are despondent. There are people who have lost loved ones. There are people who are crying out to God, and there are people who are hurting. Now, in the name of Jesus, may the power of God come into their lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, there's a, a colon blockage. I believe you've got cancer in your colon, and God is healing that right now. Whatever polyps are there are going to disappear. In the name of Jesus, the name is Michael. Touch Michael, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Someone with COPD, you're having a tough time with it right now. Put your hand on your chest, all over your lungs. God is touching your lungs now. COPD, be gone Thank in the you. name of Jesus. Thank you, Thank Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's someone else, uh, a lady, uh, you've got hip pain in, in your right hip. Put your hand on your right hip. God is touching you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Uh, there's a mitochondrial imbalance in your cells, and I believe the name is Charlene, and you, you, you feel I, I don't have any energy, and suddenly there's a burst of energy is going through your body right now. Now may the power of God touch you. Now people, Lord, are crying out to you, and we pray for them right oh, wherever they are watching in this audience. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon them. Somebody, you've got this big thing in your chest. It's a terrible congestion. If you just cough it up, Michael, it's you, and just cough it up and take a deep breath, and you're going to be completely healed, whether it's COPD or whatever else you got in your lungs, uh, pulmonary embolism. And the Lord just touched you. 
In the name of Jesus. Wendy, what else do you have? Someone, it's like a chronic laryngitis, like you just, you just, you're hoarse all the time. Put your hand on your throat right now. God is touching your vocal cords. They are being healed. You're going to feel something warm on your throat in Jesus' name. Be Thank made you, whole. Lord. Thank you, God. And Lord, may the blessing and the peace of God rest upon your servants right now. May the peace of God be yours. My peace I give unto you, not like the world gives. You give it to us, and we take that peace and that answer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. And it's 1-800-700-7000. You can call and say, look, here's my answer. I'd love to hear it. Here's my prayer request. We'd love to have them. Uh, you want somebody to laugh with you, to cry with you, to share the blessing? 1-800-700-7000. Somebody's here for you. Wendy? Amen. All right, up next, it's time for another round of your questions. Honest answers from Pat. Jerry writes, I believe confessions of sin are personal and not read together as a congressional confession. How do you feel about that? What will Pat say? Find out right after this. Welcome back to the 700 Club. It's time for your questions. Honest answers from Pat. Jerry has this question for Pat. She says, I go to a church in our little town and we read long passages in our bulletin that are confessions. I believe confessions of sin are personal and not read together as a congregational confession. Pat, how do you feel about that? You know, I totally agree with you. You know, <laughs> I, I just don't think you need to broadcast your sins throughout your congregation or throughout your town. You know, if you sin, you sin against the Lord, and you ask His forgiveness. The Bible talks about confess your sins to one another that you might be healed. But I, I think that's not the same thing, and I, 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 I would not uh, say that's a smart thing for a church to do, all right? Amen. Ian says, if you are a Christian, is it wrong to have Buddhas? Pat. Um, well, look, you know, I, I heard a long time ago about somebody who uh, bought a particular piece of jewelry, and it turned out the person who made it had, had, had put a curse on it before it was sold. Mm. And this person was terribly sick. They had, they had uh, terrible sickness on an airplane, and they finally realized what it was, and that curse was there. I, I don't think you ought to have statues of Buddha or anybody in your house. I, I really don't. Buddha was a man. He wasn't a god, but nevertheless, they attach uh, spiritual power to him and the whole religion about Buddhism. So the answer is, is it wrong? I think it's very foolish, Sharon. Right? I need to. All right, here's Michael. Pat, these few verses have always puzzled me. Romans 8, 19 through 21, NIV version. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. What is this glorious event involving the children of God, and when will it take place? Well, I, I, Paul could have been talking about the time when the Lord comes back and the, and the church is revealed and the power of God is revealed. But also, when the church moves into its, uh, its real power, and what we're seeing in today's world are extraordinary things. I believe the creation is waiting for the people of God to take their authority. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go and teach all nations. And I think the nations are waiting for the children of God. And so Paul was talking about, he may have been talking about the, the coming of the Lord, the, the appearance of the Lord. That's one thing. But I think there's something to have to do with us today. And the creation is yearning. It's under bondage, under a curse of sin, waiting for God's people to begin to speak the word and to take their authority and to exercise dominion over the earth. That, that's what, you know, in the early days, God gave man dominion over the earth, and we need to take it, all right? All right, here's Margaret. She says, I do not understand how it is right to give tithes and offerings and then take it off on tax returns. How is this biblical? Well, look, in the Old Testament, they didn't have, uh, it says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse um, that uh, you, you might be blessed. 
but uh, they didn't have an internal revenue, but actually the, the, the tithing was used to pay the bills for the, uh, for the nation. Uh, so uh, there's nothing in the world wrong with having uh, a, a, a nation which says, look, uh, we think that in the private sector, if you have hospitals and you have schools and you have religious instruction and, and you have uh, humanitarian uh, work and so forth in the private sector, uh, we'll let you take that off the money you pay the government. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Okay. I made a lot of people happy. Um, <laughs> I don't think many people feel guilty about taking a deduction off their taxes, all right? I know. All right. Well, here's Lee. Um, my mourning from the death of my fiance has been since 2016. How long is the grieving process supposed to last? Well, I don't think there's any set rule for how long you've got to grieve. Um, but I, I think. You know, uh, for example, a person who's had a happy marriage and their spouse dies, they were, the spouse who's gone on would be very happy if the remaining spouse was able to find another partner who would give them the same happiness and joy. So I don't think you have to sit around grieving forever. I mean, when people die, they're with the Lord and or they're with wherever they're going to go. And I, I, I don't think you... Yeah, there's no set time that I know of. It's just in your own mind. But I, I wouldn't make it too long if I were you. Four okay. years is a long time. I think four years is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. God bless you. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Well, today's Power Minute comes from Psalms. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord, and measureless grace will strengthen you. Well, tomorrow, the former host of Fox and Friends, Elizabeth Hasselbeck, tells us what's helping her family get through the pandemic. So for Wendy and all of us, this is Pat Robertson. Thank you so much for being with us. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.